traveling in the spirit, right? We're talking about spirit travel. Um, I had some notes and some things that I wanted to kind of even clear up um, a couple weeks ago when it comes to what we call spirit travel. So I'm noticing um, some things within within the church or within the body of Christ, especially the ones who are into ascensions or into spirit travel. And um, and I'll just use use it as an example. But I have some I have a friend and I don't need to say the name, but I tried to share um, one of my meditations in uh, their group. Um, and the, the meditation was called astral projection. And it's, it's a meditation that uh, allows you to uh, start at the root chakra and kind of go up and, and leave your body out of the crown chakra. And it's a uh, it's meditation. It's a music and it just lets you go and encounter God um, and, 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 you know, be led of the Holy Spirit through that whole process. And and, uh, and it was like, well, I don't think you should share it in here just because I don't think that our people are ready for that. So I was like, okay, that's understandable because I get it, right? Astral projection, uh, your mind immediately goes to a new age or whatever. But I found out that they're they're cool with the term spirit travel or what we're calling ascensions. And it's the same thing. It's the same exact thing. And what I've noticed over the years is that most of us are talking about the same things, but people are really... Um, defensive and keen on their terminology. No, 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 no. We don't astral travel. We spirit travel. And then there's other ministers who come up and say, yeah, we spirit travel. It's not astral travel. And here's the difference. And they've got all these laws and all of these things, why they, why it's different, why spirit travel or ascensions are different than leaving the body and traveling astrally to the etheric realms or to heaven. I've heard some people like Dr. Rowe, some of them say that uh, when you astral travel, you are just only uh, navigating through the astral realms and through spirit travel, you are immediately ascending into the presence of God and you bypass the astral realms and someone who is not born again cannot ascend to the heavenly realms and they're stuck in the ethers and you start hearing these weird, I was like, I don't, I don't think so, man. You know, I think it's the same thing. Part of me was like, okay, I could just take that same meditation and change the wording. I can edit the cover, change it from astral projection to spirit travel. And it's only, I don't even know if I say it in the meditation, um, but change that and then change in the description. It says astral projection. Just change those two words and they would, they would love it. They would buy it. They would, you know, they wouldn't be scared of it just because of those terms. I like all the terms. I want to, I want to, I see beauty in them all. Astral travel, spirit travel, ascension, uh, astral projection. You like all of them. I think that they're all beautiful. And and at the end of the day, they're, I think they're all the same thing, but it's just, uh, you know, people's belief systems won't allow them again to the pure. All things are pure, but people's, they they've called something evil or they've called given something over to the devil but on the other hand and they're explaining the same exact thing you know it's very strange also i have another meditation which i call it a chakra clearing and um it starts off at the root chakra and again much like the other one kind of raises up but it spends more time just kind of sending healing and, and praying over and cleansing um each chakra which is simply a representation of a certain area in your life, the root chakra, uh, dealing with the heart chakra, the issues of the heart, unforgiveness, baggage, going up to the the, the throat chakra. We're going to send healing and deal with your ability to speak. And you, you're afraid to, to share the truth that God has given you because you're afraid to speak because of the opinions of others. Now we're going up to the mind's eye, the third eye chakra that you're able to see in the spirit that there would be no blockages. And so it's the Holy Spirit going up. And so I just use these terms and stuff. I don't even know if there are literally chakras within you, but I understand the concept, right? And so it's the Holy Spirit cleansing the chakras or or sending out love and peace and healing to each of those areas in your life and dealing with all that. And then it's a beautiful experience. There's sound waves and and you imagine them spinning and lit up and and it's 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 very cleansing. 
um, and it's led by the Holy Spirit. Um, because I have the name Chakra on the title, many people, Christian people, they won't. Uh, that's a no go. That's a no go. We can't do it. I'm sorry. We don't believe in chakras. Chakras are not of God. They won't be any mention of chakra in my church, right? And there, so there's this staunt that chakras are demonic. But then I go to this other church a week ago, and there's chakras on the wall, but they're not called chakras. They're called the seven spirits of God, and they correlate even with the same colors. In Eastern t- tradition, and they have, and they kind of represent the same things, but it's so it's the chakras, and then there's even diagrams in the body that look like the chakras, but they they call them something different, and obviously they're called the seats of light, the wheels of light. There's different names that for the so so called chakras and things, the points of energy and different things like that. So it's very interesting how. Um, people are really stuck and caught up on uh, these names and titles. And we're talking about the same thing, but people are just kind of staunt on, nope, it's not chakras, it's spirits of God or whatever. And um, again, to the pure, all things are pure. For someone like me, and I know like many of you guys, you can see that as a held on. It's the same thing. But I, but people do, like people who are young and stuff, they're, they're confused because their pastor or they watch the teaching that said that there was a difference. You know, stay away from people who teach on chakras. Well, truth seekers uh, teach it on chakras, you know. I said, hold on. It's the same thing. I can repackage that and just change that word and it's and you're good. You'll buy it, you know. So it's it's very strange. Um, I don't want to like play. I don't want to do that. Maybe I have two virgins like I created it. But it's the same thing. I mean, I would hate for people who are of a weaker faith or what the scripture says, a more delicate faith to miss out on um that meditation because of that word so part of me was like yeah just go ahead and change it change it to spirit travel you'll appeal appeal to more people within the church realm who are stepping out into the deeper waters but then again it's like hold on i know i'm definitely called to the church realm there's a lot of of christians who listen to this but i think the bigger the majority of people are already familiar with the chakras they are uh, um, uh, um familiar with the seats of light in the body they're familiar uh and relating it back to the scriptures even relating back to the seven churches of revelation and they're this esoteric an anatomy that we have so you know i'm always uh i don't want to play i don't want to sing to the choir right i have a i have an, a mission and a mission has always been and the mandate to go into these other realms that most Christians can't go and, and talk about the things of God and share biblical truth and love and light of Christ and uh, represent him and or represent him because I feel like he's been falsely uh, represented um, by, by many in, in Christendom. So this is the mandate that God has given me. So I like all of it, though. And you let me know. Let me know in the comment section, wherever you are, send me an email. Do you like all of those terms? Do you think those terms are demonic? Because it's not mentioned in the Bible. And if we're we're filtering everything through the Bible or using the Bible as a frame of reference or a plumb line, agreed, chakra's not in the Bible. It doesn't use that word, right? There's so many other words that aren't used. The word psychic isn't in the Bible. The word medium isn't in the Bible, right? All, all of these different things. Uh, channel The word channeling isn't in the Bible, right? So if you want to speak Christianese and kind of learn that framework, then there's other words that you would use for in place of those words, you know, um, quickening. Those are some of the words, you know, ESP, extrasensory perception, being able to tap in and and, and see the way that, first of all, God speaks to us, right? Um, through these different, our senses and our body. And, you know, when a spirit is around or the Holy Spirit says something that resonates deep within our soul, we get chills, hair stands up everywhere. When a, when an entity is around, sometimes you get chills and fear immediately grips your bones and you begin to shake. Like there's different uh, things that happen, but the Bible really doesn't go into a lot of detail about that. And really ESP does. And it gives a, a framework uh, or an explanation of a, a deeper revelation of, of the scriptures and what it's trying to convey. Many people are teaching this, but they stay away from those terms. They stay away from those worms be, uh, terms because they already have, uh, I guess, a, a bad connotation with them, 
right? When people, when they hear chakra, immediately they're gone. Oh, I thought this was a Christian podcast. You know, they're gone. When they hear ESP, I thought this was a Christian podcast. And in the truth, at the end of the day, this podcast is not a Christian podcast. This podcast, I don't think it has the ability to be, to get born again uh, or, or, or whatever. But it is, um, you know, I'm a Christian. I'm a believer. I, I follow Christ. I'm a devotee of the Lord Jesus Christ and the work that he's done on the cross for the remission of my sins. And I translate that to humanity. But within that, there is a there is a grace and there is a peace for us to explore the deep things of God that that, quite frankly, maybe haven't been explored before. And I know that's where a lot of people step into this with the next age and the next stagers and my brother Gil Hodges and, and Karina and so many other people are stepping into the next next age, Christopher Carter. Um, for me, it's, I'm really, it's a renewal of the old age. Because even today, most of the stuff we, we spoke about, I don't think any of that was new or far out. Like that's just a renewal of what we already had. Like if we can go back and just have the foundations of what these people had, it, it was amazing. And it was spirit travel. It was angelic communication. It was being visited by spirits and ghosts and, and, and traveling out of the body and all of this stuff that was going on. And it's all beautiful. And I don't think it's anything new. I think it is a revival and a restoration of the things that uh, which were before already. And it's not scary. It's not foreign. And, and I do think that the that if you if you dig hard enough, you can find examples all throughout the scriptures, stuff that even we just breeze over because we don't understand. Now, in 2019, we're going back and reading it and we're getting some revelation of what it really means, because there's some context and things there. And that's the that's the, the, the you know, the, the nature of God and the song of, and, and dance between us and the Holy Spirit as we're just moving with the Lord and we're just, you know, coming to the, this understanding. Many of us for the first time, it's hard to fathom. And many of those people, whether they're in seminary, like Paula was talking about, or whether they're in the colleges or whatever, uh, or they have an agreed upon doctrine for, for them. It's hard for them to fathom the fact that God is still uh, not willing, but wanting to share and communicate and communicate knowledge and information that he's never told a soul before. Because and, and with with that, there's an arrogancy there because not of, of, of a new revelation, but an arrogancy there that we have it all figured out and we need to fit it within this box that we've 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 you know, have church fathers and what God has done in, in ages past or whatever, you know, I, I think it's really arrogant to think that we have it all figured out. Um, because within that you see each one of these different, uh, denominations of Christianity, uh, or just religions in general who think that they have it all figured out and they'll have a lot of good stuff. But then when you hear them mention one thing, you're like, Oh, you're way off. That's way off. But through love and through, uh, the fruit of the Holy Spirit, we know that the scripture gives us, well, the Holy Spirit gives us long suffering, as the scripture says. We're able to suffer long with someone and just because we don't agree or just because they're different or whatever doesn't mean we throw out the baby with the bathwater that we're able to kind of do life and uh, and not judge them and deal righteously with those people. That's the, That's what I'm looking for. I want to see the fruit of God in your life. You don't tell me you spend time with the Holy Spirit. I know. I can tell. I can see it. If you get up there to minister and you're real brash and you're real hard and you're, you know, you, you're short tempered with people. Come on. Don't lie to me. You can lie to these, you can't lie to me. It's discernment. We can tell, man, we, we, we know what you're doing. So, um, again, just take, taking that back to, um, seeking the Lord and, and going back to the secret place for yourself. Cause I do believe Jeremiah 33, three, that the Lord says, if you're calling to me, I will show you great and mighty things which you do not know and cannot find out. There are still things revealed in the vastness of space and time and heaven and in realms and dimensions that God is like, he's itching to whisper it to you. He wants to show you these things and uh, he hasn't shown a soul. I believe it. Maybe that sounds arrogant to the other half, though. Maybe that sounds arrogant to those who have their theology all already uh, hashed out on how it goes and what to expect. And, you know, and, and I think with that, you know, especially like the Reformed theology people and stuff and Calvinists, they think that the scripture says when that it says prophecies will cease when that which is perfect has come. 
And so they believe that which is perfect was the Bible, which is definitely not what that's talking about. So, but if they believe that, then these other people who were like, look, God is showing me this. I know it sounds foreign. I know you've never heard it, but this is what's communicated. Take it or leave it. I don't know. I'm trying to figure it out myself. You know, so for them, that seems like way they make fun of us, right? They they have jokes. They do videos on YouTube making fun of the charismatic movement and those who are into the deep things like this. But um, even that's a test of you to get a, a are you going to get offended? Are you going to lash out? Are you going to gossip about them and all of that kind of thing? But you know what? So you know what? Like, I know why. And even this, you know, this dichotomy of looking on it at, at both sides is how you pass the test. You have to put yourself in their shoe and say, you know, I know why you're <laughs> freaking out because I freaked out too, you know, and I didn't, you want me to explain to you within a YouTube video or a book or um, whatever of something that took me 10 years to grasp, but I need to teach it to you like I'm teaching it to a child. And that's what they tell you. And I do believe that the principles are that way. Like the principle should be easy for us just to communicate with anybody, that anybody should be able to get this. But the means in which sometimes this revelation comes, if we was to paint it out, my goodness. You know, we talk about God speaking through the TV and just being conscious of God speaking through everything. And for somebody who's never experienced that, you're like, what? Nope. God only speaks through the Bible, sir. You know, and it's just really challenging people's paradigms. And uh, but um, respect everybody for where they are. I, I do. You know, uh, even if I don't agree with them, even if I don't believe them um, or they don't agree with me, I respect them. Look, it's fine. You've never seen what I've seen. I'm sorry. You know, and it's not that's not an arrogance either. But I, but it's just it, it's a place of humility, you know, of like, look, I don't expect you to believe it. Like that would be arrogant of me to expect you to believe it just because I said it. No, but try the information. Try it. Um, somebody in the chat here says, who is this? This is, uh, uh, D three, three Martin says, uh, got, so, he says, he says, got to drink milk before you can eat meat. Yes. That's so true. I'm gonna try to find this quote, um, uh, which is really near and dear to my heart. Um, if I can find it, cause it's kind of long, but it's dealing with, um, um, the meat thing, Jesus, let's see, I can't find it, I can't find it online, maybe I can find it in this book, I don't know, but anyway, it's, it's Manly P. Hall, he has a, a scripture where he's talking about how, um, that you, you have to eat, um, you have to drink milk before you can, can eat meat in the apart and it relates it back to the what the apostle paul was saying i wish i could find it i know i've shared it so many times um uh, on my facebook well manly p hall is definitely one of the uh, uh people who has shared a lot of deep mysteries that have really blessed me over the years. And there's a video too. I just seen this. Uh, there's a, an interview with uh busy bone from bone thugs and harmony and, um, Mike Tyson and, uh, the guy who's like Mike Tyson spoke person or whatever, he's on the podcast with them. And he's like, they talk about manly P hall and they're like, who's that? And Mike Tyson's like, yeah, I love manly P hall and busy bone act like he's like, I never heard of him. Um, Let's see. Here's the quote, guys. When confronted with a problem involving the use of the reasoning faculties, individuals of strong intellect keep their poise and seek to reach a solution by obtaining facts bearing upon the question. Those of immature mentality, on the other hand, when similarly confronted, are overwhelmed while the former may be qualified to solve the riddle of their own destiny, the latter must be led like a flock of sheep and taught in simple language. They depend almost entirely upon the ministrations of the shepherd. The Apostle Paul said that these little ones must be fed with milk, but that meat is the food of strong men. Thoughtlessness is almost synonymous with child 
uh, childishness, while thoughtfulness is symbolic of maturity. Manly P. Hall. I thought that was a great quote. Um, the inner sanctum. And that's why I like Manly P. Hall. Like he, there's a lot of his stuff that talks about the inner sanctification process of the seeker of being the one who is just, you know, when everyone else is talking about the football game, you give a damn about the football game, but you got to, you have to act like you you're into it because they're going to think you're a weirdo, right? Your, your mind, your, your, your thoughts are on uh, deeper things, right? And is and there's a different pro- thought process. There's a, a different, um, you know, way of thinking and, and operating. And, uh, and it's, you know, you called out to kind of walk that path that of the mystic when at times seems lonely, seems like you're all alone. seems like you're the only one who, who understands you're the only one who knows this, but you find out as you stay faithful and you step down, don't be prideful. You find out there's a lot of other people who feel exactly like you feel. And that's what I found out definitely through this podcast is the fact that I wasn't alone. I just begin to speak about the things that I was going through, the things that I was seeing and the things that I believe, not even as an expert, but as a seeker and as someone who's wanting to get the truth out and wanting to get to the bottom of it. Right. And there was a peace in that. And uh, and there's a spirit of authenticity. So. It's real beautiful. That, I shared that in November 2012, it says. It came up in Google as I typed that. November 2012. Back when everything um, was uh, was new. <laughs> um, so, yeah. Also, uh, I'm going to put the links for Paula as well. She does some guided ascensions and stuff like that that she has. So I'll put those in the links below in the show notes so y'all can check that out. Support her work. And, uh, yeah, check it out because I'm sure it's beautiful. Um, With that being said, I'm going to go ahead and say peace and shalom. Um, Somebody here in chat, I'll just read this real quick. Uh, Peace Minds Thought says, True Seeker, what are your thoughts on human incarnation? And I guess if I understand that, it's like, why are we here? Is that kind of, is that, is that another way to rephrase that? Why are we here? Human incarnation. Um, If if that is what you mean, I, I really do think that earth is a testing place to see where we'll spend eternity. You know, I don't think that we come back, um, not as other people, you know, um, I think that on the other side, we're, we're given roles and jobs according to how we performed and, um, what we did with, with our time here on earth. Uh, A lot of other people believe that that you get reincarnated and you come back and you get to retake those tests and kind of going through that, uh, those levels until you are purified. I don't know. Um, I do believe I'm leaning more to now those who are ascending, those who have chosen the the higher path that they don't just hang out in heaven, but they're actually given roles here to kind of become what we, we know we've known as the great cloud of witnesses and they come back. Or, or they, they, they teach from the other side. They're able to teach from the other side. And that goes back to Eastern thought. And it goes back to Christianity. Because Christianity is Eastern thought. I don't care what you heard. I know it lo- doesn't look like it as Christianity in the West. But uh, Christianity is, is definitely comes from Eastern, Eastern thought. And, um, and believing that um, um, uh, the ancestors communicated. And then we see that again in Jesus and the Mount of Transfiguration going up there when we first kind of get to follow him up there and say, you know, w- what he's doing when he prays. He's meeting with Moses and Elijah. And this is something that's, that uh, Eastern thought has done for a long time. When, when their predecessors uh, passed on uh, and their ancestors, uh, there was, it's taught that they're continually, uh, it's taught that they're continually taught from beyond the grave and they have meetings with with these ancestors and it's communicated through a lot of movies and things like that star wars and stuff so henry says why would you want to come back i don't want to come back not not as a, another human i want to i'd like to go into eternity with what uh my family and um and those um, you know what, what we've 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 uh we've we've built here you know what i'm saying so um 
Uh, but as far as roles and jobs and, and things like that on the other side, that's another story. So I believe in that. But hey, what do I know? You might come back. I don't know. I definitely, uh, there, there's, and for anything in the scripture that would kind of point to a reincarnation, it was just this notion that they were always wondering if Jesus and or if Jesus and or John the Baptist was Moses or Elijah reincarnated, wanted to know if they came back. So, hey, what about is that? And uh, I think there was a time where they asked <laughs> they asked him and he said no. But then Jesus, after John the Baptist, says, look, John, the spirit of Elijah has already come back. Y'all missed it. He came back as John the Baptist. So there's a difference there where he's talking about the spirit of Elijah, which is like the essence and the message in the heart of Elijah that came back and it came back almost as a mantle that rested upon um, John the Baptist, whether it was through DNA, whether it's through he still carried the, the heart of Elijah with him. Um, or some people believe that he literally was Elijah reincarnated, coming back and dwelling as a man. So um, I don't know, but I do know that Jesus met with him. Um, met with Elijah at on the Mount of Transfiguration. So, um, yep, it definitely was happening, and uh, it's in a lot of lot of stuff. You got to look to the east, man. You got to look to the east. We're trying to, you know, figure out this stuff with a Western mindset and a European mindset, and even some people when we want to go to the ancient roots of Christianity and the ancient forms of of what was before us, many people go to like the church fathers and they go to like uh they look at um you know you know what Charles Wesley and they look at um you know all of these guys and 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 Martin Luther and look at him as they look at Martin Luther as the founder of faith. Man, if you don't get out of my face with that stuff, man, you got to go back further. Go further east, man. You got to go further east and you got to go back a lot longer. They'll look at Martin Luther and the church fathers like these are the guys who like put the stamp on Christianity. No, Christianity as you know it today in the West, which doesn't look much like what we've had in the East. And I really do believe that the the next stagers and the ascenders and people who are into the spiritual roots of Christianity is coming from the East. It's definitely not coming from, uh, you know, the, these guys, that, you know what I'm saying, in the Reformation. You know, they've they've. They've forfeited spirituality. They don't care about spirituality. It's an intellectual knowledge. You know what I'm saying? It's more of a Greek philosophy. They want to, their Christianity has become a philosophy, man. And it's supposed to be a spiritual practice, a song and dance between the creator and us. And Jesus bridging the gap for us to commune with the father and showing us how to do it. He said, greater things shall you do. And he's like, look, see how I pray? This is how you pray. They're asking him, how do we do it? Follow my example. We got the bracelets. What would Jesus do? Look, follow my example. All of it. When you, you know, and how the church was established there. I don't care what this church looks like now. I'm not concerned with that. I'm concerned what it looked like before y'all got a hold of it. And changed everything. What did it look like at first? What were they doing? That's what I'm concerned with, you know, and, 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 and I've always been concerned with that. And there's been different levels and different perceptions of, of looking back at the ancient ways. Again, the scripture says, return to the ancient ways because there you'll find peace for your soul. Returning to the ancient ways. And, uh, you know, meditation, hanging out in nature. You know what I'm saying? All of these stargazing, looking at into uh, astronomy, looking into all this. This is what they did. They were prophets and seers. They were stargazers. They understood signs and seasons. God does nothing in the earth before without revealing it to his servants, the prophets. Part of that is stargazing, being able to read the stars, knowing what season we're coming into. And then look at the birth of Christ. Who was the first ones to show up? The Magi, the magicians. If they walk, if the Magi walked into most of these churches today, they would get a boot in the stomach. Get kicked in the stomach and pushed out the door. You know, you got witches in here. There's witches in here. The stargazers. They posted on Facebook telling people how to read the stars. These were the first people to show up at the birth of Christ. And they came bringing gifts of honor and gifts that how you would greet a, a prophet. They brought these to Christ. And they were the only ones to show up. 
these magi, the magicians, the ones who were stargazers. When you when you read the, the scriptures and you read the word prophet, it translates to seer. Seer was also used in the Bible as well, but a seer is a stargazer. Look it up in the, in the concordances. They're stargazers, man. They understood. They were having visitations with beings from another realm that were coming out of the fire, that were appearing to them uh, beside their bed in the middle of the night, sending messages, communicating telepathically, sending messages without even moving their mouth. These entities are, are communicating. It's still happening today. You want to give it to the new age. You want to give it to the paranormal. You want to give it to whoever. No, I'm taking it back. I'm taking it all back. Like in Goonies, when they threw the, he went to go get his wishes, but he said, I'm taking them back. I'm taking them all back, man. Redeeming it because it wasn't evil to begin with. You guys have given it away as people are waking up because this is the giftings and callings of God are without repentance. You're a prophet. You're a prophet and called as a prophet, whether your pastor acknowledges it or not. That doesn't go away because nobody uh, acknowledges your gift. And then when you finally you acknowledge it, you step into it. Then everybody wants to crucify you. Then, you know, it, it's, you know, symbolic for the story of Joseph in the Bible who has a dream and God gives him a dream and a vision and he shares it maybe prematurely, but he shares it. And all of his brothers want to kill him. They said, no, you're not. And it's the, it's the crab in the bucket mentality. When somebody's exalted, they want to pull you back down there with them. It's the scapegoat, you know. And so it's it's casting your pearls before swine. So if God has given you something, it's 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 worth cultivating. And it's without repentance. And he's going to see, see it through. He's going to make sure that you walk that out. That nothing shall by any means harm you. Until you fulfill the, your, your God-given destiny. If you submit to God on every level, on every front, you make sure you're submitted to God in everything that you're doing. Your thoughts, you know what I'm saying? Your your intentions, your motives, submit it to God. Make sure they're pure. Make sure you ain't shady in your business and in your trading and in your communication. The gossip, make sure all of that's submitted and you're going to be okay. You're going to be okay at the end of the day. He got you. If you enjoyed listening to this podcast segment, be sure to listen to the entire episode by clicking the video to your right. Also, we are on iTunes. You can download the MP3 versions as well. Be sure to subscribe for future episodes.